In this video, we're going to create a markdown document in GitHub by starting with a Word document and then manually creating the markdown document. It's going to give us good practice with the markdown symbols, like the hash symbol to indicate importance between heading number one to heading number six, the asterisk to indicate italics, bold text or bold and italics, and several other features like an ordered list and an unordered list, a link, and an image. We'll take a look at those as we take this rich text Word document and create a similar document in a README file. In our case, we're going to create the README file in GitHub, so we need to start with a GitHub repository. I have a separate video that shows how to create that. The markdown format is a common way to add documentation to a GitHub repository. As a matter of fact, most GitHub repositories will start with a markdown file called readme.md. It's easy to create. Let's simply choose add a readme. And you see we have a little text area we can start editing here. And then when we're done, we can hit commit new file. And anytime we do a change, we can go in and change the file as well. And this is part of our GitHub repository. We'll put this side by side so that we can look at our Word document and then replicate similar features within GitHub on the left. Now remember that a hash or a pound symbol indicates importance. So one hash symbol is an H1, which is the biggest text you'll get all the way down to six hash symbols as an H6, which is the smallest heading that you'll get. It assumed that it was going to be called the name of our repository. Let me space that out so it'll look a little more user friendly. And while we're looking at a text input here where we have certain indicators of symbols like heading one, italics, bold text, so on and so forth, a nice thing that they give us is this preview function where we can see what our text looks like. So you see, big text my plant diary and spaced out as I've done so. So I can do that without saving or committing. Okay, for a horizontal rule, we'll do three dashes on its own line. And once again, we can preview. And so you see now it has that horizontal break just like we have over here. Now let's say design document. Two spaces and enter means make a new paragraph. And many times we'll add another empty line just to make it obvious here. Brandan Jones, two spaces and enter. Now we want introduction, but we don't want that text to be as important as my plant diary. So why don't we do two hashes and say introduction. And now we get to a neat part where we have some text in a bulleted list. So I'm simply going to copy this and paste. And a couple things, we could probably leave those dots as they are, but we also know that a single dash indicates a bullet. So we'll replace the bullets with dashes. Double space and enter, remember, gives us a new paragraph and double space and enter, and that gives us our introduction. Now we step down to storyboard. Just like so, we give it a similar heading, but let's look at the preview and make sure everything looks good. Sure enough, we have My Plant Diary, a break, design doc Brandon Jones, looks very similar. Introduction here, you see not as big as My Plant Diary, but still enough to stand out. Now we have a bulleted list here, and I see use your Android device. It looks like that's hanging off of that fourth bullet. So I'm glad I checked because it looks like I missed space, space, and enter. And now let's go back to the preview. And now you see that sure enough, that next paragraph, use your Android device to create your own plant diary. You see that's on its own line. Let's go back to edit our file now. And now we have a hyperlink. So we know that for a hyperlink, we'll typically, typically put the link text in square brackets. So we'll say plant diary storyboard. And then in parentheses, we'll put the link itself. And let's see what it looks like in the preview. So everything looks good up above. And here again, you see my plant diary storyboard. And this goes to InVision where I have my storyboard. Now in the Word document, I have a screen capture from the storyboard. So it's a little tricky to get that into our readme file, but there is a way to do it. Uh, I'm going to right click and choose save as, and I'm simply going to save this into a directory, just like so. And to save time, I've already saved this image in a directory, and I've also saved a class diagram image that we have down below uh, so that we can put these together all at once. Now images are a little bit tricky. They're a lot like, like hyperlinks where we have the square bracket and then the parentheses, but we also start it with an exclamation. The other thing that we need is we have to have the image stored somewhere. So we can't directly drag and drop the image into our markdown file. I wish we could, but you see we get 
little disappointment when we drag that over and nothing happens. So there's a trick that we can do. Not sure why this is this way, but we can do that when we create an issue. So if I create a new issue by going to the Issues tab and I drag this image over, take a look at what it does. It uploads the image to a, a user content location and gives me the entire markdown text that I need. So I simply need to go over to Issues and I need to choose New Issue, drag, drop, and there we go. Now I can copy that and I can take that back to my markdown file and I can paste it in just like so. And now let's go to the preview and voila, there's the image. So little trick, but works just as well. Now let's move on to the requirements section and there's going to be a lot of, a lot of markup here. So I'm just going to go through a few examples and then pause the video and continue to repeat the pattern just to save a bit of time. So pound pound, functional requirements, that indicates we're starting a new section. Pound, pound, pound. Let's go to H3, which is going to be smaller than an H2, represented by the pound, pound. And for that, we'll say requirement 100.0, search for plants. And then we could do pound, pound, pound. We could do four pounds and say scenario. And then we can paste in the text that we have here. Double space and enter. Four pounds again and say dependencies. And of course, you could copy and paste this as you wish. Maybe you do the whole document at once uh, and then you add the markup later. I'm just doing one line at a time, whichever you prefer. Uh, assumptions. And you only need to do the pound, pound, pound on the left. You don't need to do it on the left and the right. We'll go ahead and grab our assumptions. Again, double space and enter to give it uh, a line break. And then let's say examples. And for the examples you notice we have are given when then syntax and some things are bold, other things are not. So we'll keep the 1.1 on its own line. And then for given, I'm going to use two asterisks to indicate that it should be bold. Space, space, enter. And then for when, I'll surround, surround it by two asterisks as well. Space, space, enter. And once again, for then, do a similar thing. And let's see what it looks like on the preview. So we have My Plant Diary, our introduction, our storyboard, functional requirements, and take a look at this. We have requirement 100.0, search for plants, scenario, dependencies, assumptions, and then take a look, the given, the when, and the then are bolded. I decided not to bold the 1.1. That was just my choice in doing that. So you see I have several more that I need to do. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and take care of this section up to class diagram, and I'll see you again at the class diagram section. Now let's take a look. If I compare side by side, see the functional requirements are now in, and they look fairly similar to what we had in the Word document. I've done a lot of work at this point, and I don't want to risk losing any of it, so I'm going to go ahead and say commit new file. And you see that this file now shows on the front page of my repository. Also look at commits. You see, if I click on commits, create readme.md is a commit. So this actually gets versioned along with the rest of our repository. But we know we have a bit more work to do. So I'm going to go click the edit button and I'm going to come down to where we left off. And as I promised earlier, I'm going to pick up with the class diagram. So class diagram. Since this is a new section, we'll do two pounds in class diagram. Now we know we need a link to this class diagram file. So once again, I'm going to do the trick where I drag it into an issue, let it upload. Then I grab the link and I take the link back to my markdown and we simply paste it in there. I go to preview changes. And one thing that's neat is since I've already done a commit, you see any net new add will show with the green bar to the left or anything that's removed will show as a red bar. I don't have anything that's removed, but nonetheless, you can see that the class diagram has been added successfully. Let's go back and add our class diagram description now, and we'll make that three pounds. And for this, I'll just copy and paste in what I have here. Once again, we can use the double asterisk to indicate bold, and you see it gives me a little preview there, which is handy. So I paused the video for a moment and I put the double asterisk around each of the titles and also gave them two spaces and an enter so they'll all be on a different line. Let's see what it looks like now. We have our class diagram 
and then our class diagram description with each of these items you see on the right. I'll go ahead and maximize our readmeMD file because we're almost done. All we have to add now is our scrum roles and our weekly meetings. So I'll go ahead and paste in our scrum roles and we'll put a little dash by each of these to indicate it should be a bulleted list if we want. And then for the weekly meeting, instead of meeting link, I'll take that out and I'll simply put in square brackets office hours WebEx. And then following that in parentheses, we'll put the WebEx URL. And now let's take a look at preview. Sure enough, we see our class diagram, class diagram description, our scrum rules with a bulleted list, and then we see our office hours WebEx just like so. So with this, I'm happy that my design doc in markup looks a lot like my design doc in Word. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Commit Changes. Here's a link directly to the ReadMeMD. But if I go to the home page, because this is the ReadMeMD, which is a special kind of markdown, it's visible directly from that home page. So I hope this video has been helpful. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.